Welcome back to uh, the penultimate tutorial in our little series on making this promo banner for a website. We're so nearly there, we just need to add a few finishing touches just to make our banner image look that little bit more professional and just to help the text be that little bit easier to see. So there's a few things we're going to do to help with that. One thing we want to do is just add a little bit of effects, a bit of shadow behind our baby so it looks like he's more naturally part of the overall scene. I'd also add, like to uh, blur the swimming pool a little bit behind this text so that the text is easier to read against it. And we're going to add um, some drop shadow as well just to help lift the text off the background and again that will help with the legibility, how easy it is to read quickly on a screen. So let's start off with our baby then. So we're going to add some layer effects to the baby. So we need to make sure we've got our baby selected. So again, really helpful that we've labelled this layer. You may be tempted with you, as you're working in projects in Photo Plus to not bother with labelling your layers, but actually it's going to save you so much time in the long run if they're, if they're properly labelled. So we've got our baby selected. And I'm going to click this FX button down here to add some layer effects. And it brings up the layer effects options. And there are several things that we could do, but the ones I want to do is I'm going to add a drop shadow. So I'm just going to tick the little box next to it. And immediately it adds a little shadow effect, which is, which is quite nice. Uh, but it's a little bit um, artificial and a little bit strong. So we're going to make a few changes. So one thing we can do is adjust the opacity and that's how transparent this is. So if I make it 100% it's really really visible, zero you can't see it at all and sort of 70% it's sort of a nice or 60% it's sort of a nice effect in the middle. Other things we can do, I'm just going to increase the opacity so you can see the effects more clearly, is we can adjust the blur. Now the blur is sort of like the spread of our shadow. So if I make it really big you see we've got a massive shadow uh, coming out of the baby. If I make it almost nothing, it becomes a very, very harsh edged uh, blur, which sometimes is useful, but not always. Um, distance is how far away from the original image is our shadow going to appear. So if I increase that, you'll see that it's, if I increase it lots, it, it goes well off, off the page, but this is affecting sort of now our shadow, this is relative to the hair up here. So we've increased the distance from the source to the shadow quite massively. And we can bring it a bit nearer uh, to the point that actually if we take it right down, then it, it's actually, uh, it's sort of all in line and the, and the blur spreads around evenly in different directions. And we've got the intensity, which as you can imagine is the intensity of the shadow, so again, We'll probably reduce that right down. We can also change the colour for our drop down uh, for our drop shadow because it's not always the case that we want a black one. And indeed, in this case, I'm going to adjust it slightly actually and make it more of a dark blue and try and get a blue that's similar to our swimming pool blue. And I'm going to make the shadow, rather than being black, a darker blue, which will immediately reduce the artificial feeling of that shadow. And we're going to just make it quite blurred. We're going to add its distance so it sits sort of quite clearly behind the baby. Um, just adjust the transparency a little bit. And now, if we switch it off, you'll see that's what we had before. The baby is quite clearly uh, superimposed on the background. And if I just tick it back on, you can see how we've added some shadowing, which just helps make the baby fall more or feel more part of uh, of the background image. So again off and on. So I'm quite happy with that effect. Um, feel free to play around with these settings and, and, and get a feeling that for you that seems right for your images but for me I'm pleased with what we've achieved there. So I'm going to press OK and that saves that effect. Brilliant. So our baby is now uh, more nicely integrated into our background. The next thing I'd like to do then is add some blur to our swimming pool background so that it's easier to read um, the text against the swimming pool background. To do that, I'm actually going to duplicate the swimming pool background uh, so that I've got um, 
a, a blurred version of it and a non-blurred version. And the reason for that is that I don't want the blur to be throughout the entire image. I only want it really over the area where there's the text and the call to action. Uh, this part of the image on the left I want to keep unblurred. So I need to have a bit of both. So to duplicate our background we just right click on the pull background and choose uh, duplicate up here. And it's going to ask for a name and I'm just going to make it pull background blurred. Press OK. And now I've got two copies. They're at the moment completely identical, but we're going to add a blurring effect onto this blurred layer. So let's go up to Effects, and I'm going to choose the Filter Gallery. Okay, and we've got lots of different filters we could be applying. There's so much fun you can have messing around in here. Uh, but to get straight on with it, we're going to choose the Blur. I'm just going to choose a Gaussian Blur. So that's, that's very blurred, I press OK and that will blur the background which makes the text much, much, much easier to read. Uh, but it's made our baby look even more sort of fake. So as I say, we need to make sure that this bit behind the baby isn't blurred, but this bit here is. And to do that, I'm going to add something called a layer mask. Now, layer masking is, a, is a, an art in it of itself and worthy of its own tutorials. Um, so I'm going to quickly take you through a layer mask and how it works. But basically what you can do is you can add um, a mask to a layer which defines which bits of that layer are visible and which bits are not visible. And to do that, we just make sure we've got the layer we want to add the mask selected. And we can click down on this button that says add layer mask. And a layer mask works like this. It's a black and white um, layer basically and if you draw, if you get some black on a brush, let's make the brush nice and big so we can see it easily, um, if I start drawing it gets rid of the layer. Uh, so in our case this is quite subtle because we're actually the two layers are very very similar uh, but it's removing um, or it's not showing the blur where I've drawn the black. So that's not actually what I want, but that's just to illustrate to you how it works. So I'm going to uh, just undo that. Now I could go drawing behind the baby, so that would get the pull back, which would be quite good. Um, and I could do that, but it's, it's not a very subtle effect. There's quite a clear line where I've stopped my drawing uh, and where we move from non-blurred to blurred. So I'd like there to be a much smoother uh, way of doing that. And to do that, I can use something called a gradient. So again, I'm going to undo. I'm just going to save where I'm up to, just because the gradient tool sometimes causes PhotoPlus to crash. So if you've not saved yet, make sure you save before you apply it. So I've still got my mask selected. And I'm going to choose this gradient fill tool which, if you can't see it, it sits underneath the paint bucket. So you probably will see the paint bucket you need to click on the drop down next to it and then choose gradient fill. And there's a number of different fill uh, pre-built gradients we can choose from, but because in a mask black is not visible and white is visible, then a black to white one is perfect. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click in the top corner, I'm going to drag out a line to about halfway and let go. And this is going to, should, there we go, mean that I've got a bit of a I've got a gradient of blurred. It's not quite right. I'll probably want to make it a bit longer so his arm, there we go, his arm's out. So now I've got a nice transition from clear swimming pool to blurred swimming pool. And you can sort of play around with this until you get an effect that you're happy with. I think that's working quite nicely. Maybe over here. So it'll take a little bit of tweaking and changing. Um, but eventually you'll get an effect that you like. So that's layer masking. It's quite subtle and as I say it's a bit of a skill that you could go into in, um, in a lot more detail and it's something that's really useful when you're compositing an image based of several different layers and you want to just selectively remove a bit of one layer from another. Um, we'll look at that another time but for now Hopefully I've shown you enough there just to be able to have a kind of uh, a gradient on your blurring. 
Okay, we're very nearly there. The last thing I want to do now is take uh, the skill we've learnt for our baby with the drop shadow and apply it to our text so that our text just lifts off the page and just feels a little bit more dynamic and exciting. So let's grab our free layer, our free text, and we're going to add another text effect or layer effect, and I'm going to choose the drop shadow again. And by default, it's given me a pretty decent uh, layer. I might just reduce the distance a little bit down um, just to make it a bit more subtle and I'm going to do the same for swimming pools. For swimming pool I want it to be a more, bit more of a hard line uh, like a like sort of a cartoony shadow rather than a, a sort of a realistic shadow. So I'm going to choose swimming lessons effects and let's move that so we can see what we're doing. Bring the drop shadow on and for this one I'm going to take the blur right down to a zero blur. So it's a really harsh line and I'm going to make it a two and you can see how that's just a nice subtle uh, drop shadow it's not looking like it's trying to be a real shadow it just adds a nice edge to our white text and I'm going to do the same for the under threes as well so if I find my um, under three layer effects drop shadow and again I'm going to take the blur right down yeah, I'm going to take my distance down a bit and maybe the opacity a little bit as well. So there we go, I quite like what I've got there. Um, and I've sort of played around with this before, so it's, it's sort of, I, I know roughly what settings I'm going for, but you'll learn, the more you experiment with it, the more you will learn and you'll get a feel for, for what's a useful sort of combination of settings when you do these. Last thing I want to do then is I just want to add a little bit of a drop shadow to my uh, to my button so again it looks like it's off the page and looks clickable and I'm going to add a little bit of inner shadow on the text inside the button so it looks like it's sort of carved out of the button. So to do that I go to my button group and choose my shape layer, effects again, I'm going to add a drop shadow, I'm going to bring the distance in. So it's less strong and I'm going to just make this a bit more of an obvious drop shadow by increasing the opacity. And to add that inner, inner glow effect I'm just going to go to my layer 3 which is my book now text. I really should have labelled that before. Let's do that now. Book now text. And I'm going to choose the effects layer. Let's choose an inner shadow this time, not a drop shadow. Now by default it's very, very strong. Uh, so we're going to adjust that by making the blur maybe just down to maybe just one. The distance maybe one as well. And maybe I'll just increase the opacity. And it, you can see it's a nice effect. It just looks like the text is sort of cut out of the um, page. It's, it's playing with the lighting. So we've got a, a shadow below and we've got the shadows just cut in and that just gives the impression that these, this, there's some sort of 3D-ness to our button. So there we go, we've, uh, we've got everything I think ready. We've got our baby sort of more naturally merged into the background. We've got um, a bit of a blur behind our text so it's really easy to see. We've used some um, drop shadows so they just look a little bit smarter, a bit more professional and it just lifts them off from the background again just to help with reading it. We've got a nice clickable looking button that's ready to draw the attention. The very last thing we're going to need to do now, uh, which we'll do in our next tutorial, is just export um, our image in a format that is ready for the web uh, and ready for including in a website.